Hey, what's happening, guys? What is going on? Good morning, everybody. You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels. Today is Thursday, January 5th, 2023. Uh, we're rolling into the new year here. We got a lot of stuff to discuss in today's video. We're going to be doing another, doing another one of these rundowns. We're going to be talking a little bit about AI and specifically chat GPT. Uh, we've learned that in March, Bing is going to roll out an all new search engine powered by chat GPT. Uh, could change the search engine game. We got the first AI lawyer defending a man in court. Uh, we're going to be talking about the markets. We're going to be talking about layoffs. We, uh, we got a little bit of crypto news. Uh, Coinbase's stock jumped, I think, about 12% yesterday uh, on news that they had settled a $50 million lawsuit with uh, New York state regulators. Uh, so we got a lot of stuff to discuss in today's video. So without further ado, let's hop right on into it. <coughs> so... Uh, Bing is uh, going to be rolling out a new search engine, or I guess it'll be Bing powered by ChatGPT. This is going to be rolling out in March. I know Joe Rogan's been talking a lot about ChatGPT recently. Um, not sure if you guys have ever played around with it, but I would suggest uh, suggest giving it a try. Like if you need to write uh, an article, ChatGPT will write an article for you. Uh, ChatGPT can write a song for you. I saw somebody had put out a rap song uh, written by ChatGPT as if chat gpt was kanye west um and so i tried that out yesterday yesterday i uh, i went into uh, chat gpt i typed in you know write a rap um about bunny rabbits as if kanye west wrote it it wrote like an eight verse song uh about bunny rabbit rabbits in the style of kanye west it, it's pretty crazy it can write articles for you uh we're starting to learn that programmers and coders are actually starting to write code uh with chat gpt they can just tell chat gpt to write the code and it does a pretty good job a uh, little bit of cleanup work needed but uh chat gpt can write code uh kind of going along with the ai news uh, there weren't a whole lot of details about this story, like where it's taking place, what the crime was. Uh, but apparently the first AI lawyer will defend a man in court. Uh, the phone will actually listen to the case through. Uh, I'm, uh, OK, so the guy will have his cell phone on a table. It'll listen. The phone will listen to the case. And then the uh, the AI will actually advise the client through an earpiece. Uh, this AI system was developed by a company called Do Not Pay, who I think helps you get out of your speeding tickets. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of crazy. Uh, you know, AI is replacing a lot of things. You know, we got Flippy the robot taking jobs, making pizzas and making tortilla chips and making cheeseburgers and, uh, you know, dropping fries at White Castle. But now AI is actually defending people in court. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the markets yesterday. So second yesterday was the second day of the year that the markets were open. Uh, markets actually finished a little bit up yesterday for the most part. Um, the day before, markets were down. One thing that we consistently do see is higher highs and higher lows. Uh, you know, we'll have four down days and one up day, three down days and one up day, four down days and one up day. You guys, you guys get the point, but the, uh, the market is trending lower. What's kind of interesting about yesterday, uh, we learned about a lot more layoffs. Amazon's going to be laying off 17,000 people, more than the 10,000 they expected to lay off. That's going to be beginning uh, any day now in early 2023. Vimeo laying off 10% of staff. Salesforce laying off 10% of said staff. Cisco laying off 1,000 workers. Uh, ByteDance, a company behind TikTok, uh, doing layoffs in China. Micron laying off 10% uh, due to a shortage in chip demand. You know, Every day, it's 5,000 layoffs here, 2,000 layoffs there, 7,000 layoffs here. Um, and on top of all this bad news, on top of hearing that the, uh, the Fed is not pivoting, they're going to continue raising rates. And once they reach the peak, the rates are going to remain high for quite some time. There's no reason for the markets to rally, but the markets at this point, uh, the markets have been disconnected from reality for a long time. You know, during the Mexican beer cough period, you know, S&P 500 going up 30% a year, 33% a year. Uh, it's kind of crazy that markets are surging when nothing's being produced nobody's traveling, uh, nobody's trading. Um, you know, it's kind of crazy that markets were going up then. Uh, but now it seems like people are just ignoring the Fed, right? Like before the Fed might say something remotely positive and, and markets would surge. Uh, now the Fed is uh, basically saying they're going to continue raising rates, keeping rates high. We're seeing mass layoffs. Um, and uh, nonetheless, the markets continue to go higher. Uh, one type of article that I'm starting to see a lot of are these articles, you know, how to deal with a layoff how to survive a layoff. When we start seeing these articles, it means that people are getting laid off. And I already kind of touched on some of the layoffs, but Vimeo is laying off 10% of their workforce. Salesforce laying off 10% of personnel. That's over 7,000. I think it's close to 7,500 employees. Cisco laying off 1,000 workers. ByteDance into China doing layoffs. Don't know the number there. 
Uh, Micron laying off 10% of employees due to a shortage in chip demand. This is what the Fed wants. The Fed wants to slam on the brakes. They want to cool job markets. Uh, and like I said, you know, today 5,000 layoffs, tomorrow 2,000 layoffs, you know, the next day 7,000 layoffs, the day after that 10% of the workforce of this company is laid off. Uh, you know, you got to think, if Salesforce is laying off people, they actually generate a revenue. They actually generate a profit. They are actually used in business. So what does that mean for companies like Snapchat and Twitter and a lot of these social media companies and apps uh, and tech companies that are essentially zombie companies and don't generate a profit? Uh, you know, the free money has dried up. The cheap money has dried up. Companies are going to have to get leaner. Uh, they're going to have to figure out how to make a profit. And if a company like Salesforce is laying people off, uh, you better believe that more tech layoffs are on the way. <coughs> So the Fed has pretty much been saying, oh, you know, a soft landing is, is possible. We're probably not going to have a recession. Uh, you know, if you guys remember what the Fed said about inflation, we're not, you know, I know we're printing 40% of all the money in existence over the course of 18 months, but it's not going to cause inflation. Okay, maybe it caused inflation, but it's transitory. Okay, it's not transitory, but we got it under control. Okay, inflation is a runaway train. Now there's now the Fed has finally coming out and saying that a recession is quote unquote plausible. That's a quote from Jay Powell. Uh, you know, if he's saying it's plausible now, uh, you know, within the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, we're going to hear that a recession is inevitable. Uh, and shortly after that, we're going to hear that we are in a recession, but they're going to get us out of it. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not going to act like I know what's going to happen, but, uh, you know, it's very possible we're in a multi-year long recession. It, it's rare to have two consecutive down years in the stock market. Uh, it has only happened like twice in the past 30, 40, 50 years, early 2000s and mid 70s. Uh, but it looks like if uh, 2023 winds up shaking out like most of us expected to and like it's looking like it's going to this far. Uh, 2022 was a down year in the stock market and 2023 is likely to be as well. Uh, let's see, uh, more than two-thirds of economists at 23 different uh, uh, different companies are saying that rates will continue higher, uh, more pressure on the housing market, more pressure on the stock market and the economy. Uh, and again, even once these rates kind of reach their peak, they're going to remain high for a considerable amount of time. Uh, there are no F FOMC members who are expecting rate cuts in 2023, uh, and yet the market goes up yesterday. Uh, we got the next rate hike coming on February 1st. Uh, could be as high as 75 basis points, although I think most people are expecting 50. Uh, and we talk about this, like as soon as the Fed continues raising rates, but raises them at a lower rate, so point fit, you know, 0.5 as opposed to 0.75, people act like this is some great victory. If you're driving to California from New York and you were going 75 miles an hour and now you start driving 50 miles an hour, does that mean you've changed course? Does that mean you've turned around? No, you, you've slowed down a little bit, but you are still heading to California uh, and you know rates still continue to head up. Just because, uh, just because they raise rates by 0.5 instead of 0.75 basis points, uh, you know, it's not a good sign. It doesn't mean that things are turning around. Uh, we've learned that job openings remain higher than expected, and this is exactly what the Fed doesn't want. Uh, I've been seeing the narrative pop up in a lot of these stories that employers can't keep workers uh, because of the availability of high-quality job offers. Now, I really kind of disagree with that. Uh, we kind of noticed that a lot of the jobs that we're losing are skilled jobs, are white-collar jobs, are high-paying jobs. Uh, and a lot of the jobs that we're getting, more pizza shop jobs, more fast food jobs, more hospitality jobs, more barista jobs, uh, more warehouse jobs. So we're losing a lot of good jobs uh, and we're picking up a bunch of, of bad, low paying, dead end jobs that include a lot of nights and weekends, low pay, not full time hours. Uh, it's definitely not good for the economy. I think we're gonna see more countries trying to get away from the US dollar in 2023. They, they see what we did to Russia. We've we well, uh, we have weaponized the dollar against Russia. Uh, you think China is going to stick around and, and be involved with the U.S.? Everybody's going to try to get away from the U.S. and get away from the U.S. dollar. I uh, kind of touched on this, but Amazon plans on laying off 17,000 workers, more than initially expected. Um, and we're starting to see some rumors pop up uh, that Jeff Bezos may return as the CEO of Amazon. Um, and on a lot of these articles, I've noticed a lot of people talking about how Amazon peaked several years ago. Uh, complaints that people have and that I have kind of experienced as well. Uh, one of the reasons people really loved Amazon is it was so easy to get a refund, right? You could order, uh, order a couple things, see what you like, and return the ones that you don't like. It's getting tougher and tougher to get refunds on Amazon. Uh, prices aren't the lowest. I don't know if they've ever been the lowest, but prices were at the very least competitive on Amazon. Uh, now you can typically find better prices on eBay, at Walmart, at a local brick and mortar store. 
Uh, Amazon has so many fake products that, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I, I don't buy brand name things off Amazon. I'll buy it directly from the manufacturer. Um, and it also things like probiotics, vitamins, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, numerous stories have popped up over the years of Amazon selling either expired products or faulty products. I think one of the things was like Pearl Probiotic uh, was a big story a couple years ago. Amazon told everybody who had bought them to throw them out. Uh, so you can't even buy things on Amazon and be confident that you're going to get an authentic thing uh, worth something that is not expired expired. Uh, I thought this stat was, was pretty eye-opening. 15% of people who financed a car in 2022 uh, committed to a payment of more than $1,000 a month. Think about that. A car payment over $1,000 a month. That's 15% of people who bought a new car in 2022. Uh, a lot of these people probably couldn't afford that car in 2022, but as inflation tips higher, uh, as people continue to be tapped out, maxed out, credit card debts grow, savings rates go lower, uh, people lose their jobs. How do you think this is going to pan out uh, with 15% of the car buyers paying $1,000 more than the car was worth? And there's no getting out of this. You know, when I was younger, I had a couple of buddies who you know wanted a BMW or wanted a Mercedes and kind of over leverage themselves, bought themselves something they couldn't afford. And then, you know, they just wound up turning in the car um, or, uh, you know, swapping the car out for a cheaper car. Uh, all these people who bought cars in 2022, used car prices surged 44% uh, between 2020 and 2022. So these cars aren't worth what these people owe on the cars and there is no getting out from under this short of the car just being repoed. Uh, in 2023, it's expected that a traditional 60-40 stock market portfolio uh, is expected to be flat, no gains, and it's pretty much a best case scenario. Uh, Salesforce is firing 10% of their workers as it warns of a quote-unquote economic downturn. Uh, 73 employees uh, have been let go. Uh, Salesforce previously had been very supportive of remote work. Uh, they're now calling employees back into the office three days a week. Uh, you know, tech is always somewhat bloated, but I think part of the problem uh, when we were worrying about labor shortages over the past couple of years, a lot of tech companies were basically hoarding labor. Uh, they didn't want to be caught short and not have employees, so they had too many employees, um, and now they are having to lean out. A little bit of crypto news. Coinbase stock jumped 12% yesterday after agreeing to pay $50 million to regulators uh, regarding an anti-money laundering uh, regarding anti-money laundering violations in New York State. Uh, Coinbase also must quote unquote invest. Uh, this basically kind of seems, seems like extortion. Uh, but Coinbase also must invest $50 million to bolster the New York State. Uh, Dep Department of Financial Services and Compliance Program. Um, and apparently this was discovered during a routine examination. You know, uh, financial services companies uh, have to have, you know, regular audits and examinations. And apparently uh, New York State thought they were, uh, you know, violating anti-money laundering policies. Obviously, New York State is not very friendly to crypto. Uh, for years, even when all other 48 states had crypto, uh, New York and Hawaii were always kind of a big headache for crypto companies to get into. Uh, California rolled out a new law that's going to punish doctors for quote-unquote misinformation. Uh, this law has gone into effect. Government regulators will be telling doctors how to offer medical care. Um, so that, that's kind of crazy. I guess a couple doctors challenged us saying this was a violation of their freedom of speech. Uh, but the judge who oversaw the case said that this law trumps freedom of speech. Imagine, uh, imagine uh, a law trumping uh, your rights to freedom of speech. Uh, Coming out of Canada, uh, kind of real estate news, for the next two years, foreigners in Canada are banned from buying property. Uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen how crazy property prices are, not only throughout all of Canada, but especially in like Vancouver and Toronto. Uh, you know, you have a lot of foreign investors in Canada, and Canada for two years uh, is not going to let foreigners buy property. But with property prices raised so high, um, you know, this kind of reminds me of like when the Fed said, you know, at the peak of the market, we got to sell off our stocks so it doesn't look like a conflict of interest. I don't think anybody really wants to buy uh, property right now at these prices and with these interest rates. So uh, this will expire in two years and the, uh, the foreign investors can come buy all the foreclosures and buy all the deals again. Uh, Manhattan home prices see the first decline since 2020. Uh, you know, in 2020, a lot of people were fleeing New York uh, because the Mexican beer cough was so bad there uh, and because their lockdown policies were kind of so crazy. Uh, but New York ha has actually recovered pretty good. But for the first time since 2020, uh, we saw Manhattan home prices or real estate prices decline 5%. Uh, a couple more real estate stories. The Phoenix metro area is seeing cancellations on deals hit a 13-year high. Uh, and across the nation, mortgage applications are at a 26-year low.
Uh, job numbers are still coming in hot. The Fed wants layoffs. Uh, they want some of these jobs filled uh, so that wages stop rising. Um, but we're seeing that the number of jobs out there is actually growing, uh, although it's low-wage hospitality jobs. It's not the good jobs that we want. A uh, couple school districts and, and states and cities are bringing back masks in school. Uh, New Jersey school districts are bringing back uh, mask mandates. Uh, one district bought, brought them back prior to winter break. Uh, a couple other districts are having a mask mandate for two weeks after uh, winter break. I believe the, uh, the Philadelphia school district is also bringing back masks. Uh, Camden school district implementing them for two weeks following break. Uh, and uh, here's kind of another interesting Mexican beer cough story. The MBTA, which I guess is the Massachusetts Transportation System, uh, is rehiring workers who were fired because of the Mexican beer cough thing in your arm mandate. Uh, I kind of touched on this one, but rumors are swirling that Jeff Bezos may return to his role as the CEO of Amazon. Uh, Amazon hasn't been doing too well since he stopped uh, since he stepped down. Uh, you know, not to kind of crap on the the current CEO. You know, we're in tough economic times. Uh, you know, the uh, the the flurry of sales and, and, and revenues that Amazon had during the Mexican beer cough that couldn't go on forever. So it's not all his fault, but we are hearing that Jeff Bezos re may return to being the CEO of Amazon. I thought this was uh, kind of an eye-opening story. The fourth most common Google search in Los Angeles uh, was plasma donation. I think I talked on a video a couple weeks ago. Uh, my man Jake Capola talked about uh, he knows a guy who works at the gas station near him who makes two uh, two grand a month donating plasma. Uh, I know my grandma's hair, hairdresser. She drives a Hummer and she pays for it by donating plasma. Uh, she makes about two grand a month. Uh, but it, you know, people are feeling the need to donate plasma in, in order to be able to afford their lifestyle. And this kind of goes along with in the video we talked about yesterday with all the statistics about millennials and Zoomers. Um, you know, people are, you know, what, 70% of people have done gig work to, uh, to get by to pay the bills. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of articles about how cities are doomed with all the empty office space. Uh, numerous publications are talking about converting office space and, and high-rise office buildings into residential real estate. This is not really practical. Uh, these buildings are basically giant, right? Like they have a, a huge footprint. Um, so how many apartments can you really put in an office building? You know, you can't have internal apartments that have no windows. People don't want to live in a place with no windows. I suppose you could make really, really long, narrow apartments so that everybody has a window on each side. Uh, but how many people want to live in a seven foot wide apartment that runs like the span of like, uh, you know, 100 yards long? Maybe 100 yards is, is an exaggeration. But, um, you know, it just doesn't seem practical in how these buildings are laid out. Uh, these buildings also weren't designed to handle the plumbing of residential real estate, right? It's one thing uh, to have a bathroom and a little kitchenette and all these offices, but for everyone to have a shower, a toilet, uh, these buildings just are not set up to be converted to residential, uh, residential living uh, on top of zoning issues and it being cost prohibitive to do so. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if, if workers wind up returning to offices, if workers wind up returning to cities uh, in 2023. We talked about that extensively in some of the recent videos. Uh, the border continues to be an issue. We see more and more, uh, you know, immigrants flooding across the border. Um, you know, several states and several cities have declared states of emergency. I believe the entire state of California uh, has delivered a state, has uh, issued a state of emergency over the border crisis. Uh, Arizona, San Francisco, <clears throat> uh, El Paso, Texas, and a lot of these cities and states are actually uh, very liberal uh, mayors and governors who are issuing states of emergency and saying that, uh, you know, the issue at the border is a huge problem. Uh, Joe Biden, the Joe Biden White House, Jean Pierre, the, the White House press secretary, uh, they're saying that if you talk about the problems at the border, you are supporting terrorists, coyotes, and drug smugglers. Uh, Joe Biden had earlier come out and said that only far right people are concerned about the border. Uh, and you guys have probably heard about how DeSantis and the governor of Texas were shipping a lot of these illegal immigrants uh, up to New York and to a lot of these sanctuary cities. Uh, well, now you have the mayor of, I believe it's, I forget if it's the mayor of Denver or the governor of Colorado, but it's uh, a Democrat mayor uh, is actually also now flying and busing immigrants to New York City. New York's governor says that this isn't fair. You got to stop doing this. Uh, but we, we have a huge problem at the border that needs to be addressed. Uh, CBS News story came out the other day. It says Florida is the least affordable place to live in the country. Uh, they didn't really get into the metrics in terms of, uh, you know, why or how this is the case. Uh, yeah, Florida rents have gone up. Florida real estate has gone up. Uh, but, you know, I don't believe that living in Florida is more expensive than living in San Francisco or Seattle or Manhattan. Uh, you know, 
Florida has cheap taxes. Uh, the cost of food, the cost of gas, the cost of a lot of things are lower there. Uh, the CBS News article didn't really do a great job of explaining how Florida is the least affordable place to live in the country. Uh, a buddy of mine just moved down to uh, West Palm Beach. He just drove down there, I think, a day or two ago. Uh, I'm probably going to be heading out there next month to go visit him. I guess he's paying $1,800 a month uh, for a two-bedroom. And again, it's not a luxury apartment, not great amenities, nothing special. Uh, so yeah, it's expensive to live in Florida, but I don't believe that Florida is more expensive than Seattle, San Francisco, and a lot of these other cities. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of YouTube creators are upset. YouTube creators have been, cra been getting cracked down on for a long time because of advertisers. But have you guys seen some of the crazy ads that are out there? Uh, somebody, I don't know if it was on Reddit or Twitter the other day, posted you know some of the crazy ads that are running on YouTube. Um, and there's literally an ad with like a girl... She's covered up with like a, a speech bubble or a, a, a box with words in it. Uh, but she's literally like having an orgasm on camera. Um, and ads like that are allowed. But, you know, people who are on YouTube have to be very careful about what they say. You can't swear. H-E double hockey sticks is now a swear word. The S word is now a swear word. Um, and this is all in the name of pleasing advertisers. But at the same time, YouTube is running some very like sexualized and very uh, kind of risque and offensive ads. Um, I thought this was an interesting story. So in Spain, tobacco companies are going to have to pay for cigarette butt cleanup. Um, is this really fair? Obviously, cigarette butts are one of the biggest forms of pollution. It is a problem. Uh, but I feel like it's always easy to pick on certain industries, right? Like people went at, you know, uh, the government went after Juul uh, for their Juul uh, vapes, you know, pretty much just because they were the, the biggest player in the game. Uh, they said they were marketing to kids because they had like a menthol and a mango flavor. And meanwhile, we have like cotton candy, unicorn, blah, 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 being put out by a lot of these other companies, but the government doesn't really seem to care. Uh, I thought, you know, if we're going to make tobacco companies pay to clean up cigarettes, why don't we make like McDonald's, Burger King, and Taco Bell uh, pay to pick up, you know, food wrappers and things like that on the side of the highways? Just, I thought that was an interesting article and I thought it was uh, kind of interesting how they were singling out uh, an industry that a lot of people just don't like. Uh, you guys remember, I think we had talked about the, uh, the attacks on the power grid in North Carolina and Washington. Uh, they, to date, have not caught the people who did the one in North Carolina, uh, but they did catch two men who were responsible for the power outages and the attacks on the grid in Washington. Uh, initially, a lot of people were saying that it was uh, political. You know, maybe it was people who uh, support green energy and don't want power plants, or maybe it was far-right people. Turns out it wasn't political at all. It was actually uh, two men who knocked out the power so that they could perform a burglary. They went to a business, knocked out or drilled out the lock, uh, and, and that, that was the whole reason for knocking out the power so the alarm couldn't go off and bust them, uh, but they have been arrested. But, you know, like I said, this, uh, you know, we, we, we're so concerned about cybersecurity um, and you can knock out power to tens of thousands of people in entire cities just by going to a rural power station uh, and popping a couple shots at the transformer. Apparently this caused over $3 million in damage and it's going to take several years to fix. Uh, imagine if people actually tried to attack the power grid, attack these transformers, attack the, uh, the, the system and started making, uh, you know, making the power go out in different cities. This would cost millions of dollars. It would take years to clean up. Uh, you know, our, our power grid is very, 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 very vulnerable. Um, and, you know, be prepared. Make sure you have some water around the house. If, if the power winds up going out, uh, the water treatment plants can't operate. Uh, if the power goes out, you can't heat your home. Maybe you want to get a, uh, a pellet stove or a wood-burning stove. Uh, but just wanted to kind of follow up on that story. Two men were arrested. Uh, and then the last piece of news for the day, the Department of Justice is seizing Sam Bakeman Freed's Robin Hood shares. So uh, that's all the news we got for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button down below. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Uh, and as always, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts, opinions, and comments about uh, anything and everything and anything we discussed today. So go ahead and drop a comment down below. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.